Um, check it out. There's cops after me, or maybe not. everyone it's dr sam robbins welcome to another uh drive time all right so today's topic is going to be about cortisol and the stress hormone and basically how it affects your health the pros and cons how it affects your blood sugar your testosterone your libido your muscle your your um fat loss how it affects your brain your sleep so any of these things is a concern to you, including uh, various forms of, you know, uh, illnesses, let me know. Share it below, um, your comments throughout while you're watching this video, let me know what you like, what you dislike, uh, what you want more of, and so forth, because there's gotta be some interaction, guys, so I can know what you want more of, so I can keep producing that, because after all, I always say, this is for you. So let's get started. Cortisol, as some of you already know, is a stress hormone. It actually just basically mobilizes hormones. It, 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 it helps give energy when cortisol levels is higher. Uh, and there's times when it should be higher. By the way, cortisol is not bad or good. It's like every other hormone in the body. There is a specific need for it. And without it, actually, we I think we'd die. Okay, so you want it. The problem is elevated cortisol levels, constant, you know, chronically elevated cortisol levels. But cortisol gives you energy, converts, you know, uh, noradrenaline to adrenaline and, and all these things. And fight or flight, if you're about to die, you want cortisol to go up. It's there for survival reasons, okay? When you get hurt, cortisol goes up to protect. It's got, uh, it's got anti-inflammatory uh, qualities initially. It's great hormone. The problem is these days it's constantly elevated because we're not sleeping well. We have too much stress constantly hitting us. Our brain never shuts down. The spoon, you know, social media. We have so much coming at us all day long that it's constantly elevated. So the problem with elevated cortisol levels is that, especially at the wrong times, is that it increases, for example, blood sugar levels. So people who have um, high blood sugar and so forth, and they're like, man, I eat well, I, I eat low carbs and all this stuff. Well, a lot of times your stress level is high. The minute cortisol goes up, it immobilizes glucose, and that means that your blood sugar is gonna go up. So that's in one problem. Um, it also decreases testosterone levels. Obviously, guys sense this more. Um, check it out, there's cops after me, or maybe not. Um, so, when testosterone levels, at, one thing you want to understand is the opposite of testosterone is not estrogen, the female hormone, which a lot of people think it is. It's actually the stress hormone cortisol. So yeah, there's a there's a, a ambulance behind me. So the stress hormone cortisol is the issue that when stress goes up, testosterone comes down and they go hand in hand together. So sometimes when, when you're under a lot of stress, when you haven't slept well, when you're working out too much, any kind of stress, physical or emotional, you know, your, your sex drive comes down and that's your body's way of saying, hey, we're under stress. I don't want you to procreate and have babies. Remember, we're still running on a system that's thousands and hundreds of thousands of years old, not modern time. So. It says, hey, it's not time for you to go and have sex. I want to lower your sex drive, cause you to not function as well, because I want you to survive. I want you to live. I want you to get past the stressful moment, whichever it might be, famine or you know, not having a home or whatever. And then when things are back to normal, you get good sleep, your, your stress levels get back to normal, then your libido goes up because testosterone goes up. So that's another thing. Another thing is that initially, um, if your cortisol levels are a little bit higher here and that you will burn fat, you mobilize fat. That's what adrenaline, noradrenaline, all that stuff does. But the chronic part, again, is that it also lowers your thyroid levels. It um, decreases the 5 D nnas enzyme, which means that there's less T4 pro-hormone being converted to the active T3 thyroid hormone. 
So that's another problem. There's lots of other things. These are just like some of the main ones that you're gonna understand that kind of affects us, both how we look and feel. It also decreases collagen synthesis, vitamin C use, and all these other things. So chronically elevated cortisol, which most of us have, isn't good. I get people telling me, hey, I did a blood test. My cortisol level is fine. Well, blood tests aren't really accurate. You wanna do a saliva test. And the saliva test is done uh, four times a day, you know, morning, noon, afternoon, and nighttime. And this is because you want cortisol to be higher in the morning. So you wake up, you're full of energy, right? You're supposed to get out of bed like feeling awesome, not groggy because cortisol isn't working well. And you want cortisol to be lower at night. Why? Because you want things to be calm, and down and when cortisol levels get lower at night it allows the melatonin your sleep hormone to come up so you can sleep but if you're constantly racing your mind if your heart rate is up if you can't sleep you're tossing and turning if you get up in the middle of the night can't go back to sleep those are all cortisol related or mostly cortisol related if blood sugar drops too low cortisol goes up it's another thing when you follow these low carb diets or low calorie diets also, low carbs, your cortisol levels goes up. So someone, someone says, hey, I'm on a keto diet and I have more energy and so forth. That extra energy is from cortisol, one main reason. Now, if you're trying to gain muscle and lose fat and all that stuff, it's not good. A lot of times when people lose fat or lose weight, I should say, following these kind of diets, yeah, they're losing fat, but they're also losing muscle. So keep that in mind. So the goal here is to Keep cortisol levels higher in the morning, lower at night. Keep them higher like before workouts, so you get energy and you can like, you know, kick butt and have strength and stamina and get you through the workout. But then after your workout, when cortisol levels are elevated, you want to lower them so you can start to, you know, not catabolize, eat up muscle so you can start um, putting back the muscle. This is another problem with working out late at night. When you work out late at night, especially something strenuous like heavy weights, you know, high intensity workouts and all that stuff, your cortisol, your adrenaline, all these things go up. You don't want that up at night because it affects sleep. Listen, nothing works. Nothing is as important as sleep. I create awesome supplements, which by the way, underneath this link, you have information to all this stuff, uh, more about reducing stress, the best supplements, herbs, workouts, all these things. So make sure you take a look underneath this video for it. But Sleep is your number one goal with everything. And it doesn't mean you sleep any time. Like for example, I typically, especially now that I'm older, around 50 years old, I start to get tired around 9, 9.30, 10. And that's when I should go to sleep. That's my cortisol dropping, melatonin increasing. But like an idiot, I fight it. I'm like, oh, let me just check, check my email real quick. I'm working late at night. and all these things, and then all of a sudden around 10, 10, 30, I wake up by 11, I'm wide awake. I got that second wind. That second wind is your cortisol going up. It's like, hey man, mother F, go to sleep. You're not sleeping, you must be under stress. Something must be wrong. So it increases cortisol levels. And at the same time, cortisol goes up, melatonin comes down, your sleep hormone. So that's why, you know, I can't sleep now. You gotta listen to your body, Ideally, you go to bed earlier and you wake up early. Like me, it doesn't even almost matter, matter my entire life. It doesn't matter when I go to bed. Around six, seven o'clock when the sun comes up, I wake up, okay? And most animals are like this unless they're nocturnal. This is just the way we're supposed to design to work. Why? Cortisol goes up, melatonin comes down. So if you go to bed late and you wake up early, you're not getting enough sleep because you're fighting your circadian rhythm, your hormones, all of these things, okay? You don't, don't fight the body. So I take, for example, cortisol and stress relief right after my workouts and at night to help lower my cortisol levels, the different herbs and vitamins and minerals and all these amino acids that's clinically proven to help lower cortisol. And then in the morning though, I don't wanna take them. And at night I also take melatonin. I'm working with my body. Now in an ideal world, you know, we don't need all these things. We, we turn off the lights late at night, we dim things, we don't listen, we don't watch 
our phones, the bright light. Bright light keeps cortisol up and melatonin down. So that's another problem. But you know, we're in modern world. I'm not gonna tell you to change your entire lifestyle. Try to dim lights at night. Try to go to bed earlier at night. I also have more carbs at night and less in the morning. Because carbs with serotonin and tryptophan and then melatonin and all these things work better at night. So I have more carbs at night to help relax my body and get me to sleep and help me stay asleep while maybe, you know, um, less carbs during the day. I know it's the opposite of what people tell you, but this is how the body works, okay? Same thing after the workout. You want to have some, some sugar or I should say glucose, basically carbohydrates, which help increase insulin levels. As insulin goes up, cortisol comes down. That's the thing. So, but then you can't keep eating carbs all day long or else you'll get fat. That's another thing to keep in mind. That's why low carbs, low calories immediately starts to increase cortisol. And that's why you need to cycle. It. Even if you do a keto diet, you need to cycle it. Um, by the way, incidentally, since some of you guys are going to want to know how steroids work. Steroids are both anabolic and more so anti-catabolic. What does that mean? That they're initially anabolic. They increase protein synthesis. But long term, they block off all the cortisol. Not all the cortisol, but a lot of the cortisol. So that allows you to build muscle and prevent muscle loss, catabolism. That's why a pure anabolic, such as growth hormone, never puts on anywhere near the amount of muscle as, say, testosterone or anabolic androgenic steroid. This is also why women typically don't do as well under times of stress and their body just eats away and they crave more sugar and all these things. Especially when you're under stress, cortisols are out of whack, your body craves sugar. Why? Because it wants the insulin to go up to help lower cortisol levels. So again, all these factors come into play and so you want to always lower cortisol at the specific times of the day that I just mentioned. And again, when women don't, don't do well with um, stress as well, is because they don't have testosterone. Testosterone naturally helps block. That's why you have so much more energy at night, you do well at, I mean, when you're younger and all these things. But what happens is that when we get older, guys, right, you have less testosterone. This is why I suggest taking alpha viral. The less testosterone you have, the less cortisol blocking hormone you have. So again, cortisol should be lowering it of importance. Guys who take steroids, guys who've got great genetics, you know, you can't listen to them when they're like, oh, cortisol doesn't matter. It's a number one problem with not gaining muscle and all this is just overdoing, whether it's overtraining, overreaching, whatever you want to call it, most people do it. When you want to train harder, 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 harder all the time, your body eventually gives in, especially if you're not, everything isn't perfect. You're not eating perfectly. You're not resting perfectly. You're not sleeping perfectly. When these bodybuilders are doing all these things on top of all the steroids, they don't realize it. They take it for granted with their good genetics. It's like these guys are the last people to give you advice because they just don't get it. It's like a super smart guy telling you how to study because he's got a photographic memory. He reads something once, he remembers it, and that's it. But the rest of us, like me, I need to read something and study it like over and over and over again before it sticks in my brain. So listen to people who've got regular genetics, aren't taking steroids. We have regular lifestyles where it's not revolving all around working out and eating and sleeping like a bodybuilder does. So... I hope this helps. Again, a lot more information below. If you like this stuff, share it obviously, but leave your comments and questions below so I can keep adding to these videos so I can keep answering your questions and give you more clarity. You know, a lot of this stuff is second nature to me. So, but some of it, when I'm telling you, might be like, what did he just say? How do I do that? What do I need to do? How much of this? Things that I wouldn't be thinking about. These are the details. I can do a much longer video, a more detailed video. If you like shorter, snippet videos if you'd rather me do like three minute videos but five of them instead of one 15 minute video video let me know again this is all for you i'm spending the time and effort and all this stuff for you so i want to give you what you want and need and desire so just let me know share and make sure you subscribe click the bell icon give it a thumbs up to let me know this is what you like and as always thanks 
Have a happy and healthy day, and, and I'm off to the gym. Thanks. Bye.